That is insane. Discipline, tolerance, and production to build a strong and better nation. I say that is the main foundation. So come let us work hand in hand because this is our land. Come my brother, come my sister, and let us build a nation together. Remember the key to success is working hard. For our country, we must have regard. Forget all your differences, let me start. Here goes, here goes. An entire house plummets into a river. Here goes, here goes. An entire house plummets into a river, crumbling into pieces as it hits the water. I say. That is the main foundation. So come let us work hand in hand. Welcome to the Dynamic Hour again. Another opportunity that you and I have to converse, to talk about what's happening here in Grenada, Caracou, and uh, PT Martinique. I want to encourage those on Facebook and YouTube, please share the live. Sharing is caring. When you share the live, you give your friends on your page the opportunity to be a part of the conversation you underestimate your role in getting the message out more you share more people will view the program more people will see the program so go ahead and share the live at least once so your friends on facebook or on some other social media platform will be able to listen in will be able to view i want to start off today by saying the nnp house is falling apart it is crumbling before our very eyes but you have to be very careful when you are a leader what you say because it may come back to hunt you down the road and that is exactly what we are seeing with the nnp i mean the nnp had all kinds of nasty things to say about the ndc they sent their you know mouthpieces out there for many years trying to sow seeds of discord trying to sow doubts and disbelief and making people believe all kind of stuff about the ndc and they succeeded to a certain extent when the ndc lost 15 to nnp they came back again they lost 15 to nnp and they were beating their chest like king kong but now we are seeing a group of them they are out there doing pretty much the same thing that they were successful in doing with the NDC. So they're going after the snake. They're going after the head of that organization because what they want is power. What they want is to see the NNP back in power so they can enjoy all the nice life and the nice things they envious they jealous of the nn uh, of the ndc sorry of the ndc being in power performing so well and people are benefiting significantly throughout the country they are not doing that because you know they they want to see grenada move forward no no they are vexed because as it stands now the nnp is at is at its weakest 
people are not gravitating towards them, the house is falling apart. There it goes, there it goes. An entire there it goes, there it goes. An entire house plummets into a river, crumbling into pieces as it hits the water. Right. So they know that the NNP house is, is falling apart, it's crumbling, it's collapsing, and to them, they want to save it. They're fighting to save it. So a number of them, they were out there saying all manner of things, and in many instances, we know. We know from long that those things were happening within the NNP. So we saw Hamlet Mack, he came out and he said, It is actually sad though. It is actually sad. And I think um, Dr. Michel every day, he wrote some of his legacy when he, when he gets on the way he gets on and, and, and he, you know, he does what he's doing or, or, or what he's not doing. That is allowing the condition to be to be called. I mean, I've heard him in the media, and I've heard um, my good friend Emin said that the convention has not been called because the executive has not been set has not set a date. That's not true, and they know that's not true because they don't want a date to be set. Why? That's the bottom question. Why don't they want a date to be set? Why don't they want a convention? Because he's busy trying to change delegates illegally. And and so when he says that uh, well we can't we can't call a convention until the, the parties are organized. First of all, there is not a free requisite for a convention. You say it shall be a convention. Then I say when the parties are organized, whatever that means. And when he he talks about the party being organized, I mean when I had time to change the delegates to my liking. What changing the delegates does? It guarantees him to win again. So right now he, he doesn't think he can win a convention if we existing delegates. All right, so that's that's Hamlet Mack. You know, it's Peter Friend. Um, it's kind of expected, so it's not surprising, but they're out, and he's speaking, he's telling you what is happening within the NNP. I mean, the NNP is in a mess. The NNP is in a mess, and we have to be happy about that. We have to celebrate that and wish that more of that could continue, right? In politics, you have to crush your enemy. You have to make sure that they they do not survive politically and i am loving it so jenny simon you know she's a mouthpiece for 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 them and um she came on and she said the falling about hamlet and all one one who they're scared they're frightened with this instability with this infighting within nnp and all the melee that's going on all the confusion you know they're scared but let us put some more wood under the pot to, to make sure that the fire keeps on burning, making the bottom of the pot black, 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 and everything inside of it. But the confusion, the chaos, and the ones that seek to destroy their parties because they're not getting what they want, we have to stop that. I'm talking about intelligent, smart people. I see the NBC sharing Hamlet's blog and saying, you know, the veteran um, journalist and the this, and how he's so smart with the pen. They only know that now because he's in the blog and other things exposing the business of the NNP, right? A few weeks ago, their main blogger was, um, I'm not, well, not blogger, but, um, uh, what what he is a pro do, program guy right podcaster <laughs> was cussing him when 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 Calistra um spoke up against the party against the government and the prime minister for not accepting her invitation to to interview him and he cuss off hamlet now hamlet is on his station trying to destroy the leader of the of the NNP and his party. We have to stop that. All right. We have to stop that. You know, <laughs> she's not saying they have to. She's saying we, right? That personal pronoun, we. <laughs> the pressure mountain. And we need to put as much fire under that pot because the NNP is falling apart, but it was predicted. So Hamlet came out. Jenny came out, she 
say X, she say Y, or she said X, she said Y. Uh, Bud Braffitt came out. That's Dr. Bud Braffitt. The, yes, Dr. Mitchell has played a, a, a great part in the, in, in the site of the country and the stewardship of the country. But people in the last election had other thoughts that there were, of course, there were many reasons why we would have lost the last election. But one of the reasons, one of the primary reasons is that people wanted a change and and um they they do not want to go back so i feel personally if we went back to the polls with um dr mitchell as our leader we our chances would be less than if we selected a, a person and a person who has a, a, a broad following and we have we have people in, in the party who can who should come forward and contest but one has come forward and, and and others have have hinted at it who can come forward and contest that, that we have not had to be honest with you because uh, it's i've sat at most of the conventions if not all and i watch as um i mean it was almost classic you would hear nominations for a leader and someone would um, call for dr mitchell to be nominated it would be seconded and then someone would call for nominations to be closed it was as simple as that that worked well, that worked well, and, and nobody had any problem with no question. But now we're in a different phase. We, people of our generation, need to be looking to uh, the legacy that Right, we're... yeah, so that was Bud Braffitt there. Uh, they're scared, the NNP is scared, but you need to encourage Keith Mitchell to stay on, to fight for the leadership of the NNP, and to remain the leader of the NNP. We have to encourage Keith Mitchell to, you know, continue doing what he's doing to Peter because Peter has no tail or if he has a tail, it's between his lap. You see, he's a follower. Peter is not a leader. He's a coward. He's even more coward than Keith Mitchell. So you have to encourage that. Let them continue to fight among themselves encourage just that so Bud Braffitt came out then Peter Wickham came out I mean a whole pile of them because the NNP is in a mess and no one will see it it will collapse it will be worse than GLP people predicted that who know politics years ago you had a strong man leader who never wanted anybody to contest uh never wanted to groom anybody nothing of that sort so let us continue to encourage keith to remain there and fight to stay on and let there be a bloodbath politically within the nnp and i want to be there to see it i want to witness it i want to see the nnp worse than gulp so let them continue to fight among themselves is a political giant in this region and the fact that he is being beaten by persons like this suggest that Grenadians feel that it's time for him to rest. Now, I don't know that it's necessarily an indictment on him or all that he has achieved, but it's an indictment on the fact that people have essentially reached Mitchell exhaustion. Well, Keith Mitchell exhaustion. Um, the challenge is that there's another reading for all of this, and the other reading is that on the last occasion that people disposed of it, they took him back after a short space of time because they found that the alternative wasn't filling their eyes. I think that the expectation this time around, especially as you're having some of the same kind of problems emerging again, is that he can be redeemed if Grenadians come to the opinion that, you know, that there's things are not going well and they were better off under, under Keith Mitchell. Um, I suspect that that is a big part of his argument. My feeling, however, is that this time around it's going to be different because I don't believe that uh, the commission is as bad as... Uh, as uh, as what? Former Prime Minister, sorry? Not as bad as, as, as you, you, you the previous Prime Minister. There and I was so no, no, I was just, I was forgetting, I was having a, 
I know Simon is serious. Well, but Tillman Thomas. Oh, Tillman Thomas. Right. Oh, I don't think that he was. I don't think that he's as bad as Tillman Thomas. Uh, certainly in terms of holding the party together, because Tillman Thomas's real challenge was that the party broke up, the government collapsed under Tillman Thomas. Um, I think that Dicker Mitchell is doing a better job of the politics and holding it together. And once he's able to hold it together, once he's able to put some some um, some wheels on a donkey cart. And, and, and roll on to the next election, he probably will hold on simply because, you know, the alternative right now is someone that people have already said, look, we, we, we don't want to go back there. So the, the, the readings I said are, are two. You can either take the evidence that presents itself from what is the strong feeling on the ground, um, and, and certainly in, you know, what profession you can glean from the public opinion, from the uh, election results. Or alternatively, you can take an argument that said, you know, history could repeat itself, so I'll give him a chance. My, my thing is that the critical ingredient in that history repeating itself argument is the collapse of the Tillman Thomas administration. I do not believe that the Mitchell's administration will collapse. The Mitchell's administration will make mistakes. It will continue to make mistakes. I think that it has made some major unforced errors, but ultimately, I do believe that Dickie Mitchell will not collapse in the way that Tillman Thomas well, did. And as a result, look, he's stronger now because he's actually taken on a, an additional MP. Tillman Thomas was going in the other direction. All of this says that right now, um, in order to get the government away from, from Dickie Mitchell, you have to win it away from him. And I can't see Keith Mitchell being that person to beat him. So. If the NNP is comfortable in opposition and doing it, they will continue. But, you know, um, the only person that can make the decision is is, is Dr. Mitchell. <laughs> Let's see what happens. But, but also, Peter, the, the party has mm -hmm. an executive. The party has a chairman and a general secretary and uh, people who mm -hmm. can... Uh, influence and, 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 and push the and, and the party has a constitution that, that, mm -hmm. that has to be followed and none of this is happening the, 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 the executive seems to be non-existent Dr. Michel has gone and created his own structure I believe he's calling them leads and deputy leads mm -hmm. he's putting his own structure in place he's influencing the removal of delegates here and there um, and mm -hmm. seems to be the one who is continuing to run things that 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 he still continues to be a force that that people are stepping back and allowing him to do whatever he wants that the change that that the nnp may need for its own survival right so <laughs> yeah so let the nnp continue to slide and mash up let the fighting continue within the nnp i love that i am loving it and i want to see more of that uh because look Peter is not a smart politician. And let me tell you why I say he's not a smart politician. When Peter joined the NNP and Peter went, I think it was Toronto or the United States with Keith Mitchell in 2014. That's 10 years ago. Keith Mitchell made certain statements there and he was actually speaking to Peter because people thought that Peter leaving NDC and you know, anywhere Peter goes, there will be confusion, chaos, infighting, problems within that organization in my belief. He just must wreck the thing and mash the thing up in my belief. So Keith made certain statements, but he didn't listen to Keith Mitchell. He listened to everything else, but not Keith. They had seen good leaders leave the party. And when they're ready to leave, they impose a leader on the party, and it never works. I am imposing nobody on the country. The leader must evolve through the people, through the political process. All right, yeah, that one was quick. <laughs> that one was quick, right? right? Hold on, that one was quick. So Keith did not heed his advice, and he was actually speaking to Peter then, right? That one was quick. That little piece there was quick. That was Keith in 2014. I've seen good leaders leave the party, 
And when they're ready to leave, they impose a leader on the party, and it never works. I am imposing nobody on the country. The leader must evolve through the people, through the political process. So that's Keith Mitchell, and Peter was actually on that stage with him, right? And he was throwing that for Peter, but you see, Peter is not a smart, a smart politician. Keith did not even take his own advice, right? Because what we see now, he is trying his best to hang on, to stay in power within his party, right? To keep the leadership of his party. And it, it, it's amazing because this guy, Keith Mitchell, cannot be trusted no matter what he says. He's a stranger of the truth. If the truth sees him, he will not even be recognizable. The truth cannot recognize Keith Mitchell because Keith is a stranger of the truth. Hear Keith Mitchell many years ago in that interview. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell has signaled that he is nearing the end of a long and successful career. He said in an interview in St. George's that retirement has been a thing that he's been thinking about lately. I always believe one should always be thinking of the time that you will not be there in that position. So I keep, something I get emotional when I think about it because it's not an easy thing, but you have to do it. Otherwise you'll find yourself overstaying your time to the point that you will be pushed out because people get tired of everything in life. <laughs> so better people. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell has signaled that he is nearing the end of a long and successful career. He said in an interview in St. George's that retirement has been a thing that he's been thinking about lately. I always believe one should always be thinking of the time that you will not be there in that position. So I keep something I get emotional when I think about it because it's not an easy thing. But you have to do it. Otherwise, you'll find yourself overstaying your time yes. to the point yes. that you will be pushed out yes because people get tired of everything in life <laughs> <laughs> so better prepare yourself to go out when you're on top well there is no top for him now he's at the very very bottom and i want the fighting to start in a big way within the nnp i know there is infighting but i want it to be on the street i want it to be all about i want them to fight in their meetings i want them to fight everywhere they go I want them to scramble one another. Because that is exactly what is happening. Huh? But we want to see it openly. We might be getting certain statements at certain meetings. But I want this, this, I want a political bloodbath within the NNP. I want them to fight. I want them to scramble one another. Uh, if you listen to this guy, you wonder what's going on. He's at his very lowest. About going out and, and, and overstaying your time. Or you'll be pushed out. Or you could, you know run the risk of being pushed out um you want to go off on a high it, 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 it's 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 amazing folks it's amazing but this guy cannot be trusted keith mitchell cannot be trusted and don't believe that peter is any different peter is not different no peter is not different people but if you listen to that interview one wonders right? One wonders, boy, if this guy was listening to himself. Because remember that convention, he said, well, look, this is his last bout. You know how much time this guy said so? I mean, it's documented now. Grenada opposition leader and head of the New National Party, Dr. Keith Mitchell, has once again downplayed his party's constitutional requirement to hold a convention. While throwing shade at people who have called for the democratization of the organization. The NNP is likely to ignore its own constitutional requirements to hold its annual convention this year, with Dr. Mitchell again insisting a date in the future will be dependent on the quality of the party's organization. This September marks 21 months since any constitutionally mandated organ, except of the executive of the party, has held any caucus. It is the longest stretch in its history that the NNP has gone without holding either a convention or a general council. During a press conference Tuesday, Dr. Mitchell, who party insiders say is seeking to be returned as leader in spite of a campaign promise, was adamant on his stance about the delayed convention. 
Seems like some people's concentration is convention, 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 no, convention, but, but convention. But we were not, we would not be moved, and <laughs> to have a convention because some people's personal interest is behind a convention. The party, but, but the you, party has been successful. Can you argue? The doc, can you come to argue, Doctor Mitchell, that some people's personal interest is against a convention too? By well, same well, logic you give no, it. no, 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 no. Dr. Mitchell echoed the narrative of some NNP advocates in recent weeks that suggest anyone advocating for any such meeting is bent on creating what he called confusion, while at the same time ignoring such internal calls from some original members, including former chairman Sir Larry Joseph. Some people outside the party want to make a decision for the party. The party has been successful with all these forces that want to push it in one direction. It's been 30 that, odd that, years of success, Hamlet. 15 C3 Mitchell, times. And the party does not that, need that, the advice of some of those who tell it what to do. The leadership of the party will make that decision and it will not be moved by elements who want to see its destruction. We will not be moved. We will do what we have to do. The former Grenada leader hinted that anyone who is not satisfied with the state of affairs within NNP could leave. There are people who have left our party before the party became stronger. So I'm not worried about our party. We will do what we have to do. <laughs> Dr. Mitchell said in his view, reorganizing the party is the key issue right now, saying that it lost the 2022 elections because of a lack of the work of the movement. He did not refer to internal polling that showed that the issue of pension payments and leadership were the major reasons for the drop in support. Dr. Mitchell's latest comments came in the wake of a report confirmed by multiple sources that a talk show host on a local station seen as aligned to the new National Party has quit his Sunday program after he refused to give a guarantee not to bring up the issue of either convention or leadership in the party on the program. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... <laughs> I love to see what's happening within the NNP. I want the NNP. I want them to fight. Fight openly. Fight in the mud like pigs if they have to. All right? Fight. I want that to happen. I want it to happen. Keep doing that. Fight. Make your back. Grenada up. opposition leader. Right. We get it already. <laughs> ah, boy. A lot of people who had sense predicted that. That is exactly what would happen. So now, whoever fighting for leadership, Take one and Peter got it in his tail already. I am not going to support any and anybody just because they want power. I will support persons who are interested in the development of this country. That is my responsibility and I will not shift. I will not shift. And no one, anyone coming and tell you, Doc say he did go in and Doc say time he won't, he won't run again. When I want to tell you that, I will tell you. Let no damn person come and tell you that. <laughs> tell them, tell them they are not dark friends to come and tell you that dark say. Dark. Yeah, you know, it, it's amazing. You know, that type of politics, folks. Are you really want that to return to Grenada? You really want that type of politics to return to Grenada? Nah, man. Something have to be wrong with us if we want the type of politics to return to Grenada. Yeah. We are on the up and up and up. Things are totally different in Grenada. The NNP is a mess. The NNP is a wreck. They're falling apart. The house is collapsing. It's falling. It's breaking. It's ma it mashing up. If he finished, I saw it done. But we don't want to return to that dark days of politics of bacchanal melee confusion tebe that's keith mitchell keith mitchell style of politics is tebe melee bacchanal there it goes there it goes an entire house plummets into a river there it goes there it goes an entire house plummets into a river crumbling into pieces as it hits the water yeah that's nnp nnp right now is at that stage and i want to make sure that the nnp is dead politically and buried 
right? And I want to make sure that happens. In other words, not because I hear they say that they're politically dead, I would accept that. I want to go to the funeral service of the NNP, and I want to make sure I see they put them in that hole and bury them politically. NNP is no good. They're not good for Grenada. If you just getting involved in the politics or following the politics, and you hear Keith Mitchell, for example, and his Mughalang, Imele type, you know, tonation, the kind of statements he would make. This guy was never good for Grenada in the first case. But I want him to stay and fight for his party. Fight for the NNP. Fight them, wrestle with them. Politically squeeze Peter. Anyway, you could squeeze him. Don't worry, Emlyn. Emlyn is insignificant. They just throw that out there to cause people to start to think other things. Squeeze Peter. Make him ball. In fact, I met him yesterday. Yeah, uh, yes, sat right yesterday. Uh, down there in Grandance. And it's just a big laugh. Just have to laugh. Because he's living in, in a fairy tale world. The guy still believes that he could get some leadership and you know he insists that he go fight for it. You know, fighting for nothing there, you, you're not gonna win anything. You understand the point? Fight, but you're not gonna win. But one key to squeeze you, Peter David, I want key to squeeze you way you have to squeeze you. You understand? Fight. Let them fight for the NNP. Rail back and all, rail melee, and they're divided. As I traverse the country, you're getting the division in different constituencies. But it is clear, if you cannot unite your party, if you cannot put forward a plan, if you cannot put forward a vision, then what sense it makes? you trying to run country or you want to run country, you want to win an election. Something has to be wrong with you. You can't even get your house in order. They cannot even get the NNP house in order. You know? The NNP house is in a mess. And I love the fact that they're fighting among themselves. And they divided. That is insane. That is insane. That's the house. That's the NNP house. You see, you have to understand what is at stake here, people. Grenada is at stake. And you need stable hands, stable leadership. You need a united team. And the only place you're seeing that is in the NDC. You have a, a stable hand leading the charge in our beloved prime minister the most honorable Deacon Mitchell. He's intelligent. He's focused. He has a vision. He's a visionary. This guy has a master plan to transform Grenada, Karaku, and P.T. Martinique. Grenada is at stake. Grenada, Karaku, and P.T. Martinique. And the NDC is united. The NDC is focused. You know, before time, when you talk about problems and all these things, the NDC of old, that was the thing. NNP used to say all kind of things about the NDC of, of, of old. But now, look at the NNP. The NNP is a, is, a, is a wreck. It's a leaderless, headless piece of thing. They just can't get it right. And they're fighting over and over and over and over. But I told you that would happen even before the election. I told you that is exactly what would happen? Because an organized NDC will always show up the weaknesses of the NNP. The NNP has never been a strong organization. You know, ruled by an iron fist, ruled by one man. And right now he's fighting to hang on to the party. Because you have all kind of faction fighting for leadership, fighting for the party. But let them fight. Let them fight. 
It's a serious piece of division that's going on inside there. You know? Who in that corner? Who in that corner? Who in that corner? Real melee. But it was foretold. Because people with wisdom told you that the NNP was weak and told you once they lose the election, this is exactly what would happen. So let the fighting continue. I want that to happen some more. And I want to encourage you to encourage Keith Mitchell to stay as the leader and fight for the NNP. Fight for this dead old piece of party. Fight for it. Fight with Peter politically. Squeeze Peter where you so should squeeze him. You remember some years ago, there was this policeman who went to Marco the NDC meeting and a certain man squeezed a certain thing. Squeeze him, Keith Mitchell. Squeeze him in the corner. Squeeze him into submission because the guy is a coward. The guy is not politically astute. And that is why you see what is happening within NNP? Real mess. But do you want that for Grenada? Do you want that kind of organization to come back and govern Grenada? That's the big thing here. That is the big thing. Do you want that to happen? Because they are fighting among themselves. They just seem to be greedy for power, hungry for power, and they cannot even settle their own differences within the NNP. They're fighting openly now, you know. Openly all meeting the guys Tebe and Bacchanal. Tebe and confusion. And don't talk about Keith Mitchell. Keith Mitchell is a whole piece of thing. A wajan. A fouchette. A skirt girl by the river. Making real melee. Real Bacchanal. Counting people business. Cursing people, saying all kind of nasty things. That's him, Keith Mitchell. And then you have Peter, that old coward. The man coward. He's not a leader, he's a follower. Anytime the thing, the space gets warm, gets warm, he's running and hide. So Keith Mitchell knows Peter. Remember, Keith Mitchell defined Peter for me and you? Keith Mitchell defined the man. And we have to remember that to the core. And I love it. I love what is happening. Keith Mitchell define Peter Emlyn P and all define him too. But Keith define the man. Don't forget that. Here is a gentleman purporting to be, he said they, they, they assign him the task, the member for the town of St. George. He was being assigned the task to keep on top of the Rice Steiner issue, the briefcase issue. Imagine <laughs> the biggest fraudster has been assigned to deal with the fraud to the Rice Steiner briefcase issue. That's his task. That's why he was speaking today on, and he's telling me, I ain't, I ain't talking about you, Prime Minister. He has been assigned, and he's the one, every time he's on a platform, the NNP is the biggest set of crooks. Imagine who talking about crookedness. Look who talking about crookedness, Mr. Speaker. This is a gentleman who was alleged, Mr. Speaker, Right? Besides all the things that he did in New York. That he was, during the time of the revolution, he was behind his father with a gun. The biggest con men exist on that side of the house. And that's why we kept saying, Mr. Speaker, we'll have to unmask those masked men. Mr. Speaker, this is the gentleman, the honorable member for the town of St. George, who when his own mother-in-law decided to speak the truth, and admit that he was a citizen. He launched one of the most vicious attacks ever a mother-in-law has had to face by a, by a son-in-law, Mr. Speaker. He has no conscience at all. Just get between him and power. He could be his mother, his father, his mother-in-law. They will face the pen, Mr. Speaker. That's the character of the individual. But they're spreading the venom. People used to pass me and cussing me. Because they think I'm stealing the money. I see a member one day I'm walking out to here, Mr. Speaker. I remember, and it's always associated with the member for the town of St. George. I am convinced, Mr. Speaker, that there is a mindset in that member for the town of St. George. No matter what you see he's doing, this man is doing is a dangerous man. I believe he has a mind that is twisted, Mr. Speaker. Because 
He was his his friend was the one that really ran me down in Grand Mall. that took place in the town of St. George, and I believe it would be against my conscience if I did not use this platform this afternoon to send a very important message that we ought not to use our desperation as a tool to destroy the young people of this country. About a week ago, brothers and sisters, some young people went out in the town of St. George and their mission was, among other things, to educate the young people in the town of St. George of the opportunities that are available through this government for their development. One of the programs was the GTEP program, which many of you are familiar with. And they came back on the first day and said to me, Senator Pierre, we are very concerned. And the people of the town of St. George are very concerned about the issue of drugs and alcohol. I am hurt. Because on the second day, when they went out, the second day, they were followed by the representative for the town of St. George, Honorable Peter David. And I would have stood here today and be woman enough to praise Peter David if he had gone out there supporting and encouraging these young people. But I'll tell you what he did. They were in a shop with guys using alcohol, smoking marijuana. And they handed the guys who were there a leaflet which showed the many opportunities that this government is providing, not just for young people, but for the people of this country. And Mr. David walked in. He took away the paper, put it in his pocket. And what did he do to show his love for the young people of the town? He left two eggs of rum and a round of beers. Brothers and sisters, that is why I say to you, it is not just about talking youth. It is not just about saying that you love young people. It is about demonstrating your true love for the young people of this country. All right, so that's Emlyn Pepper with some blows on Peter there. Look. Emlyn Pay is not better than Peter. Peter is not better than Emlyn Pay. Emlyn Pay is not better than Keith. Keith is not better than Emlyn Pay. Uh, Peter is not better than Keith. Three of them, they ain't damn good. They know damn good. You hear me? And Grenada doesn't want these people at the helm ever again. Grenada is moving up and up and up and up and up. So let me repeat that. Emlyn Pear is no damn good, right? Keith Mitchell is not better than Emlyn Pear. Emlyn Pear is not better than Keith Mitchell. Peter is not better than Emlyn. Emlyn is not better than Peter. It's three piece of thing. You understand me? They no damn good. Grenada is on the up and up and up. You don't see the, the, the kind of leadership we have in this country. You don't see what's happening in Grenada. Good things are happening for people. Left, right, and center. Grenada is moving up. Playing the independent song, boy. If I take time and I write down All the things that I love on my island Best believe my list gon' be like five miles long Best believe it's love that makes me sing this song The cleanest breeze on the waters Friendly people meet in every corner Togetherness and love is what we stand for We stand yeah, for, yeah. we stand for Oh, island in the sun Look at how we've grown how far we've run Fifty years we strong and
sun Tell the world we are in love Going higher Fifty years we bless me for the fire Granted, but so much things they give to me Peace and tranquility Family, community You know what I'm going to go in the world Just know that the woman's where my heart is As you shake for 50 more As you shake for 50 more As you shake for 50 more Like you're only pretty cool That's the message. That's the message as we forge ahead as a people. We have a good government in power who cares about the people of Grenada, Karaku, and uh, PT Martinique. And they continue to do great things here for our people. As you know, the creative industry, while it might just look as entertaining, but it's a very expensive industry. The biggest problem that we face in the industry is the availability of equipment. Even after you buy them, there's, there's this high cost to get it into the country, especially if it's something big. Some of the biggest challenges that I've faced in the space um, at the time, really and truly, I mean, most creatives face the same issues of um, being able to um, access um, tools, access knowledge, access resources um, in a space where some of it doesn't exist. For me, this 100% concession gives me an opportunity to expand my business and it will give me an opportunity to take my business in the direction that I've envisioned it over the last few years. The 100% concession given by government towards the creative industry is going to help us a very long way. It simply means that we can invest more in ourselves and more into the business. Well, the 100% allows us to level up a little. Um, we can, we have access to more stuff, more equipment, and that gives us the, you know, the vibes to keep pushing and keep, as I said, leveling up the thing a little bit more so that we get that internationally recognized quality, um, whether it's in, you know, movie and film or in music or drama or whatever it is, we have that access to things that allow us to do that. Previously we had the, the taxes that we have to pay on every piece of the item that we bring in. I think it's like 44.4 .4 or something like that, don't quote me on it, but um, now that you know we have 100% concession, you can buy tools, equipment, resources, software, you can even um, engage more um, human resource personnel to come into your business, so that means you can really expand. I think that this incentive, this initiative by the government to allow 100% concession for creative is indeed a step in the right direction. Is a step in the right direction. And uh, we know about that, all right? 100% concession. We also know about the tax amnesty. 
that our people got. The government of Grenada, through the Ministry of Finance, is continuing the rollout of its tax amnesty initiative. The amnesty provides 100% waive of all interest and penalties on all outstanding balances up to the end of December 2021. All taxpayers with outstanding tax balances and outstanding returns to file are encouraged to take advantage of this amnesty. All tax types administered by the division are eligible for tax amnesty. For further information on the tax amnesty, please contact the Inland Revenue Division at 435-6945 or 435-6946. Email tpshelpdesk at ird.gov.gd or visit our website ird.gov. Yes, tax amnesty. We're going up and up and up. And that is the beautiful thing about the NDC administration. This administration must be given tremendous applause and appreciation for the work they have done um, regarding the payment of the retroactive. Of course, we know about talks about pension reform, but we have um, ran the first leg and we have ran it well. And hundreds of people, in fact, thousands, the whole of Grenada is happy for this because the retirees, they also have families and people are looking on. And I think it does a lot for social and economic justice in this country that the retroactive um, payment has been made. It's a, it's a joyous occasion for me. It's, it's, it's like a dream come true. I feel it for those senior citizens who for years had to struggle. Um, some of them had to go through um, demeaning job um, that they would have left and um, had to find ways to survive. Um, so it's, it's really a, a good feeling for me. It's, it's, it's many prayers answered. And I, I commend the government for taking that bold initiative to pay um, the, the gratuity and pension. Yes, so while the NNP continues to fight, fight among themselves and uh, make real bacchanal, the NDC administration continues to do good things for our people here in Grenada, Caricom. Pity Martin. <laughs> My monthly payments are easier in terms of my responsibility in terms of paying bills because I can I can divide and have better management in terms of I pay the bill. I don't have to wait until the month to pay everything one time. Basically, it is divided in two, so it's as simple as that. If you have a thousand dollars of paying bills, you pay five hundred dollars the first week. You pay five hundred dollars the second week. It's, it, it 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 is simple in terms of maths where. It is not a thousand dollars upfront. If you understand, what I'm saying, it's it's as simple. So if you manage yourself properly, it is it is manageable, and you pay one bill, you pay the other bill, and you have other things to do. So it 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 works out perfect actually. It is a good idea because I've been in the system for a while now. Um, it also takes discipline on the person because no matter if you get money every week, every two weeks, or whatever. You have to manage yourself and make sure that you pay your bills on time and you make sure you have that payment there. So it's all about scheduling or whatever. But with the money coming every two weeks, you know you have a money coming in. So with the bi-monthly payments, I believe that they benefit those workers who have financial obligations somewhat towards the beginning or the middle of the month. It gives them ample time to get those obligations out of the way and then enjoy the rest of the paycheck that they receive at the end of the month. And you personally? And so for me personally, because I have, you know, my daughter's daycare to pay as well as rent and bills and many other financial obligations pertaining to my daughter, also including medication, which I do have to refill every two weeks. This payment gives me a chance to not have to save in bulk, but I can simply just get the medication every other week with my salary. Yes, uh, very nice. Up and up and up. And uh, I'm not hearing the NNP coming out and say, well, boy, the government paid only this time, boy. The government paid on the 12th instead of the 14th. I'm not hearing the NNP and all their surrogates, pundits, zygotes, goons, and sicko fans coming out and commend the government. Well, how you could pay so early? But you know, when one or two people, because of administrative issues, get the little kakadalit, boy, is big TV, big melee, boy. Thank you.
The government of Grenada, through the Ministry of Caracol and Pitimatnik Affairs and Local Government, is examining the idea of installing night landing facilities as part of a plan for improving the overall operations and structure of the Lauriston Airport. A team from the Grenada Airport Authority, led by project manager of the Caribbean Air Transport Regional Connectivity Project, Donnell Mitchell, was recently on island reviewing the structures that are in place at Lauriston. He explained that the aim of the project is to enhance regional connectivity by improving the safety of air transport. Yeah, so a landing is coming to Caracol very soon. I see they had a recent meeting there. Things are happening for our people. Things are happening for our people. All right, up and up and up. That's what's important here. Things are happening for our people. And we have to welcome that. Right. which oftentimes has the potential to bankrupt the person. If we have insurance, you at least are guaranteed that you have the ability to pay for most, if not all, of the expense associated with that. Um, two, we are significantly looking to beef up scholarships and so on that are available to our nurses and other healthcare uh, professionals. As you are aware, we also continue to look for scholarships opportunities for persons to study medicine and so on. But I think the big strategic one is the, 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 the new hospital and we view the new hospital from a revenue generating concept. We want to have a state of the art hospital that uh, allows the doctors at SGU to do their rotations here. Uh, if that happens, that means they spend two additional years here. That helps to boost the economy from a tourism perspective, but it also gives almost immediately uh, our public access to a lot more doctors, even if they're trainee doctors than otherwise would have obtained. I think two, we specifically want to target uh, health and medical tourism. Uh, because we think that feeds directly into uh, our tourism brand and what we, we want. And if we do so, it means then that the revenue generated from this can help to underwrite uh, the cost of running the, the hospital. Um, and if we do medical tourism, then the medical tourism must be uh, first class and world standards. Which then and uh, that was the most honorable Deacon Mitchell. You know, boy, oh boy, God send this man. You know, we really dodge a bullet in the last election, eh, you know. God sent Doc... Uh, God sent the most honorable Deacon Mitchell to save Grenada, to rescue Grenada, to transform Grenada, to develop Grenada, to make the place better for all of us. He cleaned, he cleaned this place. You know. I remember after the election, among the rain that fell, he purged it, he washed it out. Boy, we really dodged a bullet. Don't forget, I will be celebrating 10 years in radio and podcasting uh, come May the 15th on the 31st of May. That's Friday, the 31st of May. I'll be having, I will be having an event, a celebration down there at the Trade Center. I have the tickets, 50 EC for one, 50 EC for one. Don't forget that at the Trade Center on the 31st of May. Even if you can't make it, buy a couple tickets. It's 50 EC as a form of appreciation. I've been doing this for the last 10 years. So if you can't come, buy a couple tickets. All right, send me a WhatsApp on the number you see scrolling under the, the live program for one five four eight one seven. Say, hey, Kemba, I go buy five tickets. I go buy ten tickets. I go buy three. I go buy two tickets. I will send the money for you and so on. Western Union, MoneyGram, maybe in person. You know, if you're here in Grenada, you could, you know, drop by and so on. But um, I have a lot of tickets, so please buy up the tickets. It's ten. Uh, it's fifty EC, fifty EC. So um, you know, uh, I look forward to you buying a couple. If, if you can come, if you can come, so be it. If you can come, as a form of appreciation, buy a couple of tickets, all right? WhatsApp me. Let me know what's going down, and we'll take it from there. Take good care of a wonderful Sunday. I'll be back with you tomorrow, God's willing, starting from 8 in the a.m. Uh, as I volunteer my service to serve you with excellence. It ain't easy, but we got to do it. We got to keep the journey. Uh, we got to keep on that journey and keep the thing alive. Take good care, and bye for now. Bye for now. I look forward to you buying a couple of tickets and supporting you know, uh, me uh, being on this program for 10 years is not easy, but I've stayed the course, all right? Morning and night. Uh, and we have great many things to achieve together. Remember, the tickets is only 50 EC. You can send me a WhatsApp message. Hey, can't buy one, five tickets, one, four tickets, one, you know, because May the 31st is not far from now, all right? We are already on the 14th tomorrow, the 15th. One month from tomorrow will be the anniversary, the 10th anniversary of me being on air. 10 years of me being on air. And um, the 31st 
would be the Friday 31st, 15 days thereafter, uh, 15, 16 days thereafter. So I want to uh, encourage you, buy a couple of tickets up. All right, support. So yes, you could pray for me. Yes, you could say, well, but I support a likely program and thing. But at the end of the day, 10 years is a big thing, a big deal for me. And I would love you to buy a couple of tickets and support. 